hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I hope you've subscribed as well or I'll be coming to pay you a visit. <laughs> I'm Peter Fury and uh, don't forget to subscribe to Porky's Corner because I've been a helmet of the month and you need to listen to me. <laughs> yeah? So follow him, yeah? And get the fella some followers up for Christ's sake. He wears his hat on his sleeve, the good man was. So follow Porky's Corner, he says it as it is and uh, you know, I appreciate the helmet of the month, Russ. <laughs> no problem. No problem, thank you very much. You're welcome, mate. The bomber tattooed on his back is of course a reference to his potent punch power and not in any way insensitive to the tragedy which unfolded in this arena when Ariana Grande performed Manchester will never forget. to the gentleman fight which I made at last minute notice so it were a fight and then that were a it were a different level to Nicky Gentleman. Um uh, and then we got the Martin Murray fight which were a proper fight which could have elevated us and he won't take it. Yeah. And he made an excuse saying, Oh it's too short notice, I've 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 uh, I've I've eaten, I've eaten since since uh, since that fight and I've had a drink. Well we were about three weeks to still got it's still got plenty of time we were fighting fit but it just had a, a breeze of a fight with Nicky Jenner. Didn't make sense. Do you think that? Uh, <coughs> do you think that maybe Liam it, Liam didn't handle it so good because obviously he, he won the title, didn't he? he? Went out and got a sport, a, a, a fancy sports car and Rolex and all that. Yeah, do you think that maybe? Well, he won the ABAs. His dad's prancing around. I've known Alan. The, yeah. The gambler. Do you think Alan, he didn't handle it well? I don't think he handled it well. I don't think, uh, and they, you know, some people won the ABAs, and and uh, they were moaning about one of the hotels they were in and things like that. And uh, and you go, hold on a minute. Why they did you put them in a tent, then? Fantastic Dennis. achievement, and then all of a sudden, they, they, people change. My dad had said to me, Dennis, you'll find out a true person when you either give him a position of power or you give somebody a lot of money. Do you think my dad said that, and and that's sometimes what happens with kids. They they forget where they've come from, and that's what I'm. Then all of a sudden they want to be humble again when they get beaten. They want to come back, and that's what <laughs> the only reason I had to lean back was with Chris and I got him these opportunities, uh, and I got him raised to the IBF because I thought he was a different person. Mm. But then obviously he weren't being hundred percent honest with me because he didn't tell me about the uh, traces uh, after the CD fight, which uh, and. You know, there'd be certain promoters would be saying, no matter how much money you got, yeah, he didn't get a fortune, but he still got paid, uh, and I helped him. I paid for some of his nutrition, and I paid for this, that, and the other. I paid for some of his, you know, some of his uh, equipment. But uh, they forget about that. But there's certain promoters would say, well, you got to test positive. <laughs> uh, they'd um, ask for the purse bike, because that's what happens. The purses, when they get test positive, positive get suspended and they don't get paid so you know uh, i've moved on from it and uh, it's a shame that liam didn't come and sit down with me when i tried to ring him and, he, uh, and talk to him and just see what we can do to help each other and then when he gets stripped to the commonwealth i think he tried to blame me he was going to get stripped to the commonwealth i'd try to make a fight with elliot matthews which would have been a good fight for liam uh, down london 
and he'd have got decent money for fighting Elliot Matthews. Is it Elliot Matthews? Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, in London on Mo Pryor show. Uh, Old Boss then, Og. Uh, and then he got, so then I think I got blamed for making that fight. That's the reason why he got stripped. He were always going to get stripped because he got tested positive. This is the sort of mentality you're dealing with. And, <laughs> you know, if, if Liam had listened to me, he obviously had people in his ear who, this is what happens. Jimmy McDonald had the same. They get success all of a sudden. He's got people who's experts. Ah, you need to do this, you need to do that. It's you what's doing the fighting. Well, same with Clinton. If Clinton had stuck with me, he could have been doing the fighting, having to fight his heart out. Uh, for central area titles, but I manoeuvred him onto the world scene where I made him a millionaire. It yeah. could have been just earning domestic money, Clinton, which a lot of people thought that's that were his that were his ceiling. A dom, you know, a good domestic fire. Well, we I had I had all these ambitions for him to do more than that. Me and Neil Port believed in him, didn't know how far he could go, but together we 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 achieved the the pinnacle. And he earned a lot of money. And uh, if you look at, you know, you know Robin very well. Yeah. Robin Reed. Uh, earned a lot more money for Clinton, and he come out with a lot more money uh, uh, than Robin uh, for same kind of fights. And um, same with the uh, Welsh War. Just thinking on there. I was just thinking of somebody else here. Oh, Junior Witter. He was a world champion at the same time. Got nowhere near the money that Clinton had. And uh, and that's what I was doing for Jamie McDonald, and that's what I'd got. On my agenda, if I could, we'll go as far as we can with Liam um, and make him financially secure for the rest of his life. Uh, and, and that's what I've done with Clinton. Uh, helped him achieve that. He's obviously doing the fighting. But without somebody like me, he would have never got there. And and he's looked after his money, and I've got him more money than anybody else could have ever got him. Um, but you know, some uh, uh, what you've done for him. Do you have your fighters in private medical care then, Dan? I had Clinton in private medical care because uh, he was like family to me. I, I was paying for his private medical care. Even when he'd retired, Russ. Never. Uh, did he ever mention that? Did he ever mention the Rolex mm. boy? Did he ever mention the WBC uh, number plate I bought him? No. Uh, no, because I just wanted to make Clinton happy. We were like family and we were on a journey together. Uh, but people forget, Russ, what you do for them sometimes. Um, well, I've always got on with Clinton. Some bits, but they don't tell you the full story and then they just mump at certain things and make excuses for themselves when they didn't want to take a fight, or oh, he made me fight there. I never made Clinton, 100%, I never made Clinton take any fight. Clinton never refused a fight. He was the ultimate man's man and a respected fighter. And uh, to this day, I respect, I respect Jamie as a fighter. I love him as a fighter. I just don't like somebody's, uh, he's just not honourable. If he was stuck with me like Clinton did, uh, and it were only at the end of Clinton's career that he stopped listening a bit, Clinton, if he'd have listened to me a little bit more, and and because I used to, he didn't realise, and I probably did, and even more so now that I was mentoring Clinton and getting him to positive thinking and what he could achieve, uh, he could have still beat Tavares Cloud, Clinton, but yeah. he started to get a little bit more negative and lose a little belief in himself. Mm. I could have re rebooted that with the help of certain other people, mm. and we could have won another world title I, 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 that's the only regret I've got with Clinton yeah uh, moving on then and of uh, course and I, I, there's a certain trainer who who, uh, who I didn't realise wasn't the real deal who were working with us at the time uh, had an influence there who pops him and, uh, well I don't want to mention the name but uh, he uh, shouldn't have been at that level but you know, I, I I loved him like family, the kid up there, uh, and I gave him the opportunity. But uh, got a good brain. But you know, it's like me trying to tell you about the ins and outs of I'll, I'll use something silly here, prison. Yeah. I don't know 100% the ins and outs how it works. Obviously, I've got pals. My dad did a 
one or two stretches and stuff like that. So I've got plenty of power. But I've never done the prison, so I can't tell you 100% the feeling. Mm. Do you know what I'm getting yeah, at? Yeah, I know what you're getting at, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pops so and, uh, yeah, when you've yeah, got yeah, yeah. people telling you this, that, other, and you go, hold on a minute. Who've never had a fight? You've never done it, and you're trying to operate at this level. Uh, you're doing it on the back of somebody else, and you know, there's, there's a few people in boxing who, and you know, some of them, I don't, some of the people who we've had a, a pop at, I don't agree with you because they're fighting men, but there's others who are parasites and frauds, yeah. Uh, and 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 they, they play the victim, but they're not honorable, the, the integrity is not 100%, and they, they've never put their hand in the pocket and took a risk themselves. Uh, they've they've run on other people's bike, and uh, and then they want to play the victim. And there's, there's too many people in boxing, and that's on the management promoter's side, and even the boxer's side. Yeah. Because some of the boxers aren't what well, people go. Oh, I, I'm just looking out for me fighter. Well, sometimes these fighters change when you get them to. And Frank will tell you, and that's why sometimes probably Frank's hardened to it, and he treats them all the same, and thinks, well, they. You know, I'll, I'll I'll treat them all the same because uh, I know they'll shaft me. So what's Frank saying, Dennis? What's that saying he said to you? He has a saying, oh. doesn't he? What did he say to me now? Did he say, or, or, or is it in his column or something? I, I, Haven't he got a saying about boxers, Frank? If, what? If you want loyalty, that one. No. Yeah, is that it? Oh, is that Mickey Duff in it? If you want loyalty, no, get Duff, a, Mickey Duff. Loyalty by, by, by a dog. Yeah. But, um, yeah, they're staying away, but, you know, there's certain kids like, you know, like uh, Tommy Franks of this world, and, you know, I, I, I think, you know, Clinton were loyal to me, but it was just towards the end of his career, he, he lost his way a bit, and he stopped listening to me a little bit, but, uh, you know, that's why we achieve what we achieve, and even after some of the things where he's putting his book are not true. Yeah. They're not true, and, and like, oh, why would you do that? I mean, he praises... You know what we achieved together were fantastic, but it doesn't quite see even put something. I'm told I haven't read the book, so I don't want to read it because uh, I'm told there's one or two untruths in it. But there's even put in the book. I thought he thought that uh, the, when I gate crashed the the um, Roy Jones press conference with him, he thought it were prearranged. I won it. I just I just shook my head and I went, like, I can't believe he said that. He were there. I were there. Uh, and like, why would it, you know, I think, what are you thinking about, man? You know, what we achieved together and, and how I made that fight, I was just going over to Miami and just throwing him on stage. Who cares if it were prearranged or not, though, Dennis? You got the fight, didn't you? Didn't you? Yes. I got the fight for it, but Punston thought that would prearrange me throwing him on stage, I think. Oh, well, you, when you flew over there, though, what, 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 didn't you, have a, didn't you pl plan it out, what you were going to do, or did it just, just do it off cuff? Did I, I just thought, I just thought, I thought, well, what shall I do now? I know, we'll go in the press conference and go and sit at the front before anybody gets in, <laughs> as soon as the main fight was over. So we sat there waiting for ages, and then nobody would mention Clinton's name because they didn't know he were, and they went, well, why, we, 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 they were so much in awe of Roy Jones that they won't talk, they didn't talk to him, they were like royalty at the time. And, I, and that's why Roy, to this day, is as 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 pal with me because he knew what I'd tried to do for me fighter. Is he your pal? Is he your pal, Dennis Roy? Pardon? Is Roy a pal of yours, then? Yeah, um, he's a pal of mine. Didn't you have him over to Jersey, then? I had him over to Jersey. Yeah, treated him well, and you know we try and treat people properly, don't we, Russ? And, uh, Roy Jones rocking up in Jersey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. He loved it. Did he? Loved it. Yeah, and I helped I help Spencer Brown get him over here because Spencer does a lot of these after dinner things, and uh, and uh, we uh, we did some after dinners with him, and uh, and uh, thankfully I'm pals with Spencer. I, I helped him uh, get get uh, some tours and for uh, some gigs for Roy in in England. Yeah. Ah. Uh, move, moving on then. Uh, you didn't put Liam Cameron in Savoy then. Chris, not like hotel you put him in. <laughs> I put him in. I put him in in our hotel, which is rated number one in in Jersey at the moment. The hotel where I've got shares in, uh, and they moaned that it weren't in the centre. 
of Jersey. Now, how big is Jersey, Russ? Nine Massive. Five. Yeah. So you're always five minutes away from the sea. Yeah. Uh, uh, so did my, so that's when he just he just started his career. And I got him a fight in Jersey, and he moaned about the the hotel they were because it was too far out from St Elia. And I go, oh, hold on a minute. It's only a stroll down the beach, isn't it? Off Richmond and Woodthorpe and like, uh, and then they moaned about the hotel. So then it's just that's the sort of mentality you're working when you think, oh, do me a favour. I know where I've I've had to live in caravans and all sorts, and I don't forget where I've come from. Clinton never ever moaned what hotel, uh, you know, some of the hovels he lived in to 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 take him out of his comfort zone to get to get him to be the personality and the character. Uh, bring that out of him. That's what he endured, and that's the reason why he achieved. Yeah, Carl Frotch said to me last night that uh, when he was ringside for Clinton against Glenn Johnson, uh, I think it might have been. I may can show would it. Yeah, yeah, both. He said he would obviously he was starting out on his journey at the time, or he'd been going a, a bit, not not had that many fights, and he says. <laughs> He says, I thought, oh my God, if this is how it's going to be, this I, I'm in for a rough road with my style. You know, his style that he's got. Yeah, Cause he's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He said, because they, they just were in the pocket for 36 rounds, weren't they, Jones? Uh, eh, sorry, Johnson and Clinton, weren't they? They knocked oh, lumps out in each other for three fights, didn't they? Yeah, that, and I'd love to have put Clinton in with, uh, with uh, Froch. Froch. Yeah, can you imagine how that? Glenn Johnson for Froch uh, mm. towards Glenn's career, and he, and he troubled uh, Froch for the early rounds, didn't he? Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah. But Glenn, Glenn would past his best then. But uh, Clinton and Froch would have been a great fight. It'd been a probably a bit of a bloodbath, but that it could not fail to be a, a tough, hard fight. And and I think Clinton, being a being a naturally bigger fellow, would have given him a touch of an advantage you won't agree with me because you'll think that Tyler would have beat him but uh, depends what weight they fought at doesn't it that's what I'm saying if it had been the light heavy I think uh, I think Clinton would have been slightly too big but it had been not far off well it were a 50-50 type fight but I, I would have just said Clinton I don't, obviously I'm going to say Clinton anyway but I think what a great fight that would have been. I asked Clinton about that fight and he just sent me a picture of him doing an impression of an owl <laughs> meaning that that means that they would have knocked smoke out on each other done it 12 for 12 rounds done it I think so I think it'd be a tough fight but I think it'd be a classic uh, I think it'd have been a fight that people would have talked about for years and it might have been one of them where they did it again and again yeah. And then a fortune out of it, and both being good for each other. Um, so I'd have loved to have seen that fight anyway. Uh, yeah, I would have done as well. The Clinton Carl Zaggy fight, Dennis, uh, nearly happened, didn't it? We've done the deal, haven't we? We've done the mm. deal. I went down with my solicitor, with nobody else there, and uh, and, and Frank and Ed. Uh, Ed, uh, oh, what are you calling this? This, this fellow we used to work with. Ed Simons, would it? Ed Simons. Anyway, the um, we did that deal in a in a, in a hotel uh, off Marble Arch. Uh, that day we were done. I shook hands with Frank, and uh, and it was uh, they pulled out. I'd come by and said the deal's done, and we waited and waited. I got my solicitor chasing them up, and uh, a week later she said, "No, the fights." Uh, uh, oh, he kept kept putting us on the train, and the next thing I know, I whisper that he's. Uh, they're going to do the uh, Bernard Hopkins fight. So that fight was done. Uh, and anybody who says it wasn't, it was never going to happen, don't know what you're talking about. Uh, because, like I said here again, you've got pretenders saying that this will, this will go down, that will, that will go down, happen. Well, look what certain people's done who's, who's left me. Uh, the only people who are fall out here, so I'm not saying I'm right about everything, the people who've pulled a straw or they haven't been 100% honest, their integrities have uh, been tarnished. Mm. And and that's the reason why I went. But I haven't gone and bore street because I don't run to the police and things like that. But I haven't, I haven't broadcast it. But when people start playing the victim again, then if it comes to it, if I'm boxed into a corner, then I'm going to have something to say. Uh, now, I've let 
the reason why certain people in, are involved with boxing them are my, are my, are my fault because I've given them opportunities because I've, I'm a sucker for a sob story and I, mm. and I, you know I'm a family man and I look at people's family and then they catch her at the wrong moment you know with like certain people who we were speaking speaking about with, with Ricky and me and uh, and uh, it catches a, a, a bit of a low point do you think Obviously. people have took advantage of Obviously, you know, and, and, of, of yeah, you and Ricky Hatton, because you've got a few quid. Yeah, but, but not just the few quid, Russ. It's, it's, the, it's, the, uh, it's the position and the doors that you can open. That's 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 what it is, and they ride on your back and make out as though they've done this and that, but the networkers uh, and brain thieves, and, and they use other people's money. Yeah. O, OPM. That's what they are. That's what they say. Instead of MBEs at the back of the name, they should, be, they should have the name and OPM. And they, that's what the title should be. They should be knighted for having an OPM, using other people's money to further their, themselves, and then using decent people as trading stones who, who trusted you. That's what that's what they do. Certain people. Yeah. But you know, all I all I look at Russ, is look what I've achieved and made happen, and people see through these. People will say, oh, I made that, and then they look back and they go, hold on a minute, it weren't them actually. They've just been making out as well with them. And people get uh, TV uh, uh, deals and on false pretenses by yeah. being good con men. Yeah. Yeah, confidence and trips. That's not great, it's because um, you know, I'm happy doing what I'm doing. I'm successful in business, but I'm successful in the bo boxing world. Yeah. Uh, if, even if I never have another world champion, which I think I'm going to. Yeah, uh, um, Richard Towers, Dennis. M moving on to Richard Towers. Uh, he's been with you two years now. How did you meet Richard? I've known Richard for a lot of years, uh, Russ, and yeah. um, um, <coughs> I've always had the utmost respect for Brendan, and and he he, in, he has, which is a, which is a glowing compliment to me. Uh, and Richard will tell you this. Richard had so much respect for me. Uh, so uh, Brendan had so much respect for me and my dad. Uh, um, but uh, when Brendan started to step down, uh, Brendan was the only one who I'd want to work with uh, over mm -hmm. at, over at that uh, over at Winter Bank. Like he was the pioneer. He inspired me to get involved with boxing. So I'd see Richard and I'd think, well, I can't work with him with him because with Richard because he's he's with other people. Who I don't really tend to work with. Mm. Uh, if it is, if Brendan had been, the only regret I've got is that Brendan had got a, it were, Warren had got a lot more resources to offer uh, than I had at the time. But I'd have loved to have had <coughs> worked with Brendan a lot more before he took a back seat. Because, uh, like I say, it was inspiration to me to get going in boxing. And uh, but that's how I met Richard, and then I met him. Uh, we were having a coffee somewhere and uh, we just, anyway, hey up Dennis, hey up Richard and we just got chatting again and we come together properly over the last few years uh, uh, and uh, that's, we, we, we're inseparable, uh, we, our family is, and his, my family and his family and uh, it's a distant relation of Sarah's anyway um, and um, we just, we're, we're just like family, uh, he's got, he's a very, very, excuse me, to say the story he's got, very, very intelligent and very principled, which I'm, I'm a bit too principled myself sometimes. That's why I've uh, come and stuck with certain people who aren't as principled. But uh, that's why we eat it off. And uh, <clears throat> if we go and win something together in boxing, which, uh, which I'm sure we're going to, uh, it's going to be a, a fantastic memory. So I'm looking forward to that unfolding. Yeah, uh, he's he's not Richard's not the bad guy that he's painted out to be in media, is he? And obviously he did that podcast with Trish Dixon where you know he was stabbing people and putting irons on the chests, and then he get thirteen year and he got acquitted of some attempt murders and that. Did but he's yeah. he's made out to be a lot badder than what he is because he's pretty humble, isn't he? Yeah, he is. I mean, you know, we we love Peter. If we thought mad at were. Uh, a rogue at times, but but honourable. He didn't yeah. <laughs> didn't do things to you know old people on yeah. the street and, and love with little kids or anything like that. Um, it were bad people at the time doing things to bad people. What you call what you might just call in 
inverted commas, bad people. People robbing and people's uh, stashes. <laughs> they should, they should, yeah, have, they, should stash it. they should check who's stash it. They should check who's stash it is first, shouldn't they? <laughs> yeah, but, you know, my dad did, did prison for fighting, but he go and fight people. My dad did prison for violence. Yeah. But he wouldn't. But my dad used to buy old people the groceries and and and. People who got kids and they got no money who to give people money for <laughs> to make sure kids have got Christmas presents. That's the sort of people that Richard is and and uh, and, and uh, the Furies are, uh, as far as I'm concerned are like that. So that's why I've respect for them kind of people. Yeah, they're hard men <laughs> and they do certain things. What you think? Oh, hold on a minute. <laughs> and then say things, things that you don't think is politically correct. But as regards being honourable, that's why. I like the, the, the gypsy way of, of, of dealing with things. They, 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 have, they, take, they take the shirts off, uh, no gouging. If they go down, they have to get up until once, once they shake hands and call it. Uh, <clears throat> I like that way of selling things. Yeah. That's the way that way the old school, and that's that's the sort of principle that, that Richard's got. Yeah. <laughs> so going back to your dad, Dennis, so somebody told me a story a few months ago. It might have been uh, that Michael Jackson, you know, he used to come to shows after parties. He, he told, he's told me a story that uh, your dad used to drive around, is it Burley, where Barbara lives? Is that Burley? Yeah, yeah. He used to drive around there in his Rolls Royce, pop boot, and there were uh, loads and loads of steak and cheese, and he used to hand it out on a steak. Oh, he did, he did that, right? And people would say, "What are you going and spending all all that for, uh, then, then? Uh, to you wasting your money?" And he said, "Yeah, people just give me it for free, so I'm handing it out." <laughs> yeah, they would get stuff, but he, he did. He do certain things like that. Driving around yeah. council estate in a Rolls Royce in early seventies. <laughs> it did do stuff like that, me dad. It does yeah. stuff like that, but it weren't. It weren't. It weren't no. Uh, it weren't completely snow white. It were. Yeah. As regards people who were the less fortunate, they were, they were good to him, and that's why I've always thought I need, I need to keep them kind of values, and that's why I like about Richard that he's got them values uh, that, that my dad's got, and I like to think I've got. And I think you, you know, underneath that crazy slating. Uh, uh, personality that you've got, Russell. That's what you've got. Yeah. Well, do you know why I'm like I this? Your kids. I look at your kids and I look at how you treat older people. And I know they get some things wrong and, and so much stuff. I, like I said to you before, I've had a pop at you about slagging people off. Who you shouldn't slag. So. On, underneath, <clears throat> you've got them values, and that's why. That's why I still talk to the actually. Well, let me tell you this, right? I did 10 years over a 12-year period in jail. I've heard every story there is, so I don't suffer fools, Dennis. And you know this boxing? Jeez, so much stuff I hear. And you know what? I'm starting one to second, become... One second, one second. Right, one second. Yeah. Yeah. You okay? Yeah. 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 I'm starting to lose my fucking one mind. Can I just put your on, on Go on, one then. Second. Go on, then, Dennis. Pause, one second. I'll keep it rolling. So, Dennis, when you do, when you watch this back, Dennis, you'll listen to me saying, "I don't suffer fools gladly with all this nonsense that we're fed constantly." Stub up. No problem, mate. No problem. No, I'm just saying that. I don't like to listen to bulls. I don't suffer fools in this boxing. Because when I started with you, right, let me tell you this. I were mesmerised by it all. And then slowly but surely, I'm like, you know what? I'm not enjoying it as much as I did at the beginning. And then you start to scratch the surface. And Terry and Rico, right, it isn't as glamorous as what people think is it behind the scenes. Oh, no. And I've got a family where I grew up on Ernst and... Duran and Leonard and Agler and I used to watch them and I would mesmerise them and then and Kings and Bob Adams and I've ended up doing business with them and but it, like it's not as glamorous uh, when I was doing all that stuff it were it were, it were pressure and you didn't didn't enjoy it you thought well I'm in the middle of this and I've got to keep the wits about I mean I've got to I've got to operate at high level you don't look you don't appreciate what you've done until you look back like I've done now nah, and I've looked back that, but we were all like a, a flash. <laughs> I could operate at that level. Yeah. Um, 
but it's 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 not as glamorous as what you think it's it's high pressure there's people wanting to jump into your shoes the people want to stab you in the back there's people who give the word and they break it uh, it's 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 not it's not an easy business to get kids up there and then they, they want to break contract. It's it's a it's not a great business, but you, the sport itself is a fantastic sport. But it's the people who are in it who who who, who, who tarnish it. Uh, uh, but that's not everybody, because there is there's some great people in, in boxing, and uh, I get have some great now it's great conversation I've met been fortunate that's what it's done for me and there's some fantastic people around the world who are involved with boxing but I've met a lot of yeah. uh, the way yeah all right well we'll finish off on this Dennis what do you think to Richard Branson at the moment trying to get that furlong money didn't you right first of all I just want to say thank you very much for liking and subscribing it means a lot to me because uh, we're on this journey together aren't we so anybody got any ideas for the channel fire them over to me porkycorner at mail.com all right shout out to innovation alloys and South Yorkshire packaging all right don't forget to subscribe keep on trucking <laughs>